I often look at people in public and I'm grieved by the fact that many of them are headed straight to hell. I believe the heart of the evangelist is burdened by God to the inevitable fact that time is a commodity. Once spent, we can never get it back. I've literally experienced on more than one occasion the weight of the responsibility a preacher carries when ministering the gospel to the lost. We never know when is our last day, our last hour or minute. I've preached the gospel in memorials and to this day in the flesh wonder if it was appropriate and was I maybe too harsh. You see, the facts though outweigh my carnal thoughts. In the message I stated, this may be the last time God stretches out his hand towards you. Don't slap it away. Today may well be your last chance. I later heard of deaths of certain attendees within days of that message. You see, the gospel is an offence to those that are perishing. So I can only imagine the indignation against me where people may have expected me to rather assure them of their loved one's entrance to heaven and that God just loves them as they are. Throw a few random scriptures and call it a day, pick up my paycheck and leave. You see, my conscience just won't allow it. I'm not wired to tickle your ears. The thought of being held accountable for the blood of a human being that was scheduled to die and I was the last point of contact and instead of preaching an offensive truth I chose to give a sugar-coated lie, is just too terrifying for me. Choose to be loved by all, and be the cause of someone suffering in hell for eternity, or hated for the truth, but turn someone to eternal life, for me it's just a no-brainer. It has cost us dearly, but what price do you put on a human soul? Jesus seemed to think it was valuable. Valuable enough to step out of eternity into this world and be slaughtered by the very creation he created. In John 1 verse 10, it says he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. How many times do we hear the unbeliever say, if God really wants to be known, why doesn't he just show himself? What a ridiculously stupid statement to make. He did, 2,000 years ago, and we murdered him. Do you really think it would go any different today? What value do we as Christians put on knowing God? I don't mean know him in a religious sense. I mean really know him. If you truly know God and understand who he is and his attributes, How can we be satisfied just to know we are saved? It burns within us that all must hear and know the truth. Relationship, a word so often taken for granted. Is it not an amazing gift from God to open our mouths in prayer and know he hears us? The God that created the heavens, the earth and the seas and all that are in them. A God that is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, everywhere, all the time. Omnipotent, all-powerful immutable, unchanging, stable and solid in all these ways. Here's my voice, a mere sinful human being, a vapour, here today and gone tomorrow, and he cares. It's mind-blowing. In Psalm 34 verse 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous, and his ears towards their cry. And the righteousness I have, that his eyes and ears are on me, is not even mine, but a gift from Christ. To know him. How my heart breaks for the religious churchgoers that have never received a word from the Lord to them and seen it come to pass. Never felt the presence of the Holy Spirit or those entertained by a demonic spirit masquerading as the Holy Spirit. Again here, we have two very distinct camps. The far left that believe God has now become mute in in taking a scripture completely out of context and clearly ignoring many others. And then the far right that is literally that literally blaspheme God by making his church a circus for demons. To truly know him is what King Solomon was speaking about in Ecclesiastes. Life has no meaning without God in it. All is vanity. We toil, we sweat for material gain, and then we die. What is the meaning of it all? In Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13, it says the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. To fear God is to know God. To fear him is to reverence him, to worship him, to be in awe of who he is. We cannot reverence him if we don't know him. Think about the power he has and we 
minute little sand people can come into his presence never afraid that he's in a bad mood, never hesitant, waiting for the right time. If we know his word, we know he is the same yesterday, today and forever. We can know what he likes and dislikes, what makes him angry and what makes him cry. Yes, God does cry. Hear the account of Jesus when he came at the death of Lazarus. In John 11 verse 32, it says, Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? Because Lazarus was dead? Because he should have come quicker? Or was it because he saw the grief in those around him? It definitely wasn't because Lazarus was dead. He already knew and purposely delayed his coming to show the power of God. In John 5 verse 19 it says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. When we read scripture, we can see the very nature of God through Christ. God rejoices. God cries. God is grieved and he is joyful. God cares. I stated in a previous video on the life in Psalm 23, he is our shepherd. He provides, he protects, he loves, teaches, directs, and yes, he rebukes. But he is a living God with a personality that, we, that should cause us to rejoice. Then why do so many not know him? In Matthew 16, verse 4, Jesus speaking, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Unbelievers want a sign to prove God exists. But Jesus clearly states that the only sign they will get is a sign of Jonah. This meaning, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so too would Jesus be dead three days before being resurrected. In Romans 1 verse 20, it says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, even since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. You see, the proof of the existence of God is all around us in nature. Therefore, they have no excuse. So in closing, do you know God? I mean, really know him. Are you religious? You look the part, say and do all the right stuff, but you're dead inside. Have you said a prayer once? Believe in Jesus Christ, but don't know him. There is no walk with him. He's merely alive in the pages of your dust-covered Bible. Are you so focused on your career and getting the biggest house or fanciest car that you never take the time to speak to him and in this never hear from him? We take more time to plan a vacation than we do to plan for eternity. What if today is your last and you find yourself before a God you do not know? When you come face to face with him, will you cower in fear because you do not know him? Or will you run into his arm because you know him and his nature? Life has us on a hamster wheel, always busy getting nowhere in a hurry. My wife recently reminded me of a saying, if the devil can't get in front of you and stop you, he'll get behind you and push you. You see, the devil doesn't mind religion, but he hates relationship. He doesn't care if you go to church and do your part on a Sunday, but he does care if you know him. Church changes no one. Relationship does. When we know him, we become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Our mouths become bigger, our prayers filled with the praise and thankfulness. God moves in our lives. So today, get your Bible off the shelf or out of the drawer, wipe the dust off and get to know him. Fall to your knees and tell him, flood my heart and soul, God, that I may know you. In Psalm 56 verse 11, it says, In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? This is Barry Hutton for his Infinite Mercy Ministries, preaching the truth of Jesus Christ and exposing the lies of Satan. Amen.